Here on North Canterbury's number one radio station, Compass FM. Very great pleasure of welcoming into the studio once again, uh, Craig Mullen, uh, the North Canterbury rugby game developer. Good afternoon, Craig. Good, good afternoon. How are you? Um, good, yeah, really, really good. Sort yeah. of coming down uh, on a bit of a um, high after the end of the season. But, yeah, of uh, course, yes. Yeah, no, but uh, I'm yeah, still, still, I've got a coaching course to run this afternoon and there's um, this footy winding up all over the place but it's um, all no, good I think really the well. last time we spoke you had been to the RSA you'd run over here to do the interview and you were running back that's again that's right yes so we had our long luncheon yeah yes, how, how, what was the uh, what was the outtake on that well the long going? luncheon was really good it was, it was a fundraiser for the boys to get across to Japan um, we had uh, designer jerseys or specialist jerseys for the occasion and they were auctioned off and I, I'm pretty sure they, um, they totaled around 15 thousand dollars for the um jerseys wow. yep and that was just That's it just one fantastic afternoon at the rsa <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> um and it was great just great support from local people um we had alec wiley uh and richard lowe speaking we had marcus taylor and Stu Dalzell, who are local legends when it comes to north canterbury rugby and um just a great afternoon and um the the effort that went into to get that off the ground just a couple of great people you know michelle tocker yep. who's actually up for um, volunteer of the year in the Canterbury Awards. Fabulous. Um, she's on the New Zealand um, on the North Canterbury board. We've also and she's on the Woodend board as well. Plug for Woodend and she's um, and of course we had Rebecca McLean and and then the members of the senior management all got in behind it. You know, big stole borrowed auction items um, and and spent a lot of time um, organising it. But just it did it brought in a lot of money and just got us over the line for that trip to Japan. And I think what probably would have helped with that that is the uh, is the game that we that we had in Rangiora. And, and Correct. That, yeah, that brought day. along a good crowd, didn't it? A really well, good... according to gate takings, they, they I think six and a half thousand people paid to wow. get in. So. I'm not sure they all stayed to watch the MPC Taranaki game, but um, there were a lot of people there. And uh, um, a rumour has it, so please don't quote me on this, but rumour has it it's the, probably the biggest crowd uh, Canterbury have had in the last two years. Wow. Yeah, so, so that's... Yeah, I mean, it does highlight the fact that we've got to get um, our rugby back out to the community I was going to say, can we safely surmise from that that we will have another game very soon? I think it was so successful, and I was at the wind-up with... At, at, uh, um, at Rugby Park with the CRFU and the feedback that they've all had was just how wonderful the day was can we do it again so uh, yes yeah, so yes. can we do it again yeah we could yeah, do it again absolutely and, yeah. and once again we had fantastic um, support from the community uh, just some great people out there I know that on the day the Ashley Rugby Club uh, they ran all the hospitality uh, they did a fantastic job feeding um, all the players because uh, we had it wasn't just the NPC um, Taranaki and Canterbury sides here. We had all the Southbridge Shield teams as yep. well. So yep. there were um, about six games in the day. Or there were six games in the day. A total of um, so what twelve teams um, yep. and all the hangers on and all so. their supporters yep. and the hangers on and the families and the yep. oh what, what what a fantastic it was day. a massive day. It started a wee bit early, I think, for some of the under sixteens. They kicked <laughs> off at nine thirty, um, and I think uh, well, the, the game I watched half of them were still asleep to start with. But no, it was a very great day and just just such a positive vibe for yeah. the. Community. Community. Yeah, it's, it's a wonderful thing. And we'll look forward to that happening again up here in our little town, Rangiora. Yeah. So now the representative uh, team off to, uh, the, we're off to uh, Japan. Uh, back now? Back now. We had a, a bit of a welcome home for them the other night on the back of the North Canterbury prize giving for the open grades. And um, uh, the, the player of the year for the North Canterbury senior side, um, showing that age is just a number, was uh, Josh Maynard. Um, Josh, I won't say his age on ear, but he's been around the sun a few times. And... Um, he just he's just got better and better with age so we had a bit of a celebration our personality of the year was Paul Burgess one of the managers from the senior team who's a uh, stalwart of Glenmark Cheviot um, club of the year was the Ashley Rugby Club uh, for all the work they do and they're, they're growing us they're growing these open grade teams but also their junior teams are flourishing um, the junior personality of the year was once again uh, the lady I've already mentioned Michelle Tocker uh, from Woodend she's just um yeah, a fantastic gift for North Canterbury rugby. I mean, she's Irish, so she has a gift, really. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Our, our cult of the year, our most valuable cult was... Um Excuse me, Regan Holden from Hiranui. Uh The uh, most valuable cult of the year was a young man, Louis Bethel, who I think has a big 
future uh, in uh, representative rugby and we had uh, um, Jesse Houston from Oxford uh, former New Zealand Sevens player he was our players player of the year for Fantastic. the North Canterbury side yeah so I think I've got them all off the top of my head <laughs> well, some, someone will ring in someone will ring in because I, I, on the night I said that you know and Josh has held um, Josh Maynard had held the South Bridge Shield aloft on two occasions well I was wrong he's held it aloft on three occasions oh, so. yeah you were called out on that I right? was called out on that yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay, so where to next for North Canterbury? Well, that's just it. So t- I'm heading off uh, to run a um, world rugby coaching course this afternoon. It's this afternoon into the evening and, and all of tomorrow. And we're really fortunate to have seven North Canterbury coaches uh, registered for that course. Wow. And they range from uh, under-16 coaches through to senior coaches. So it's just a great way of developing your own skills as a coach. Uh, we've got lots of reviews going on at the moment across clubs. Um, clubs are looking at how their season's gone. They'll have their AGMs coming up shortly. Um, in some cases, there may be a change of um, uh, talent on the board. As naturally happens. Which, yep, yep. Natural attrition. Yeah, uh, of, once course, you, of course. Once your kid's finished, yeah. it's all time to go. <laughs> um, and and, and then, sadly, you can lose a little bit of talent with that, of course. Definitely. I mean, I, th- and I suppose, too, I think a lot of the clubs, you know, th- there's some clubs out there who are doing it really, really well. They are um, they're, they're building progressions and they're, they're bringing people in um you know, and they're, and they're sort of training them up, and they're staying on when the um, when the more mature or experienced members of the clubs move on. So it's good. It's well, they've certainly got themselves organised for that, haven't yeah. they? It's good. It's, it's good so to see. So you're keeping yourself busy uh, all, all summer. Um, all summer. So uh, at the moment, I'm uh, contracted out to Canterbury Rugby Union to do a little bit of research around facilities in Ken Canterbury. So that's keeping me busy. Um, we've got obviously we'll have our AGM and things coming up. I've, I run a lot of these coaching gigs. Um, I've got a review that we're putting together for the senior uh, campaign, which was uh, the local campaign. They went unbeaten. They played five games and, and won five games here wow. in, in, in New Zealand. Um, the Japanese trip itself, though, was the highlight. And uh, we really we really need to do that again. The, the boys have come back from that and realised just how close they are um, to professional play. Yes. They, they did play against the top um, team from Panasonic. How did that go? Uh, it, yeah, it was it was thirty five seven. Um, I it didn't disgrace them. No, sure. I watched the game on I watched the game on um, uh, on video uh, that has been sent back, and uh, they played some really good rugby, and they were. They were strong and they were aggressive. A couple of the tries that uh, Panasonic ran, ran in, uh, it was yeah, w- they were gifts. But yeah, um, yeah, the boys yeah. realise now that they and uh, that they, how close they were. Anthony Tavendale and um, <clears throat> Mike Keane were originally chosen to stay over, so they've they stayed over. Unfortunately, Anthony dislocated his shoulder in the final game while they oh, were over there. No. Um, so he was replaced by Harry Murray from Saracens. Um, so Harry and Mike have stayed on and been a part of the professional setup uh, as they as Saitama Wild Knights build their way into their into their season. Yeah, yeah, and well, look, it's these tours that are gonna that are gonna challenge their uh, abilities and 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 li- and, and lift them. Yep. Uh, uh, it, also, it also brings out um, what they need, yep. uh, what they actually need to be, to take it to that next level. And we've got so many players out here um, in North Canterbury who are just that close mm-hmm. or just good enough we had you know a couple of our players um, went up against NPC players this year uh, when they played in the Tane Norton and actually outplayed the NPC player so th- there is there is hope um, <laughs> yes. we want to keep this um, Japanese trip going because uh, it's incentive for players to stay here yeah. it's incentive for players to come out and, and stick around and, and, and we know that if we build a pathway at least the players will have two pathways if they if, they, if we get looked at the future is bright if, yeah. it's, 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 we just scratched the surface and I'm, I'm really excited and looking forward to where we're going yeah and I think everybody everybody in North Canterbury should be excited about what we can do here in our own little province indeed thank you very much uh, Craig Mullen thank Not you so problem. much for coming in uh, North Canterbury Rugby Game Developer Compass FM FM FM